Hello friends, welcome to the ATC Double Cut. In this episode, we're going to take a look at something that you might think is very simple. Maybe you haven't thought about this before, and that is how you calculate the average daily temperature. A lot of people will be doing this to calculate things like growing degree days or to look at growth potential because the growth potential for turf grass is calculated based on the average daily temperature. This is something that I have looked at extensively for a number of years, and I sometimes calculate this in, in different ways. So I wanted to share this because this was prompted by a discussion I had with a Pace Turf member, and this Pace Turf member uh, had asked me about the growth potential and they were getting growth potential at one location that was slightly different from the growth potential that I was getting. Now, there could be a number of reasons why you might get a different growth potential value. Uh, one of them is that you're getting different weather data. You're just using weather data from one source and I might be using weather data from a different source and those temperatures could be slightly different and that could contribute if the temperatures are different that would cause a difference in growth potential values that are generated from those temperatures but there's also the situation which I, I speculated could be the case that I would be calculating even with the same temperature data I may be calculating this as an hourly average, the, the average of 24 hourly temperatures to get a daily average, and somebody else may, may be using the method of taking the daily high temperature, adding to that the daily low temperature, dividing by two, and from that taking that as the daily average temperature. So I decided to check this for a few locations and to write a blog post about it, and to reassure this person that there was no big issue and that in the long run, you tend to get the same type of average temperature. But it's an interesting one to consider and it's interesting to consider which one is more accurate. And if you really want to get the most accurate average temperature possible, I'm going to tell you by the end of this episode which way I would use. This is a post on the ATC website with the title Calculating Average Daily Temperature. I will put a direct link to this in the show notes so that you will easily be able to go check it out and look at these detailed charts that I showed in the blog post. I started this off, it's, it's a short post, just a two minute read. I started this off with this statement. Did you know there are different ways to calculate the average daily temperature? A new Pace Turf update discusses this. In that update, I looked at the daily minimum and maximum method and compared it to the average of hourly me measurements method. I checked that for Maui, for Whistler, and for Tokyo. And I then showed a chart which shows the mean daily temperature at Tokyo, Japan, and I calculated that by two methods. And I... So the two methods are this. You take an hourly temperature measurement, which is not the average across the hour. It's just a measurement on the hour. So you get 24 measurements over the course of a day, and you take the average of those. And that's the way that this is done by the Japan Meteorological Agency. So in Japan, when, when the Japan Meteorological Agency reports an average daily temperature, they are reporting it as the average of 24 hourly measurements. Now, another way to do this, and the way that it is most common around the world, is to not take hourly measurements because not every weather station records the hourly measurements. Not everywhere in the world is recording temperatures that frequently. But almost every weather station is recording a high temperature for the day and a low temperature for the day. So what you're able to do is take the daily high and the daily low, add them together, divide them by two, and that also gives an average temperature. But my question was, how do these differ? Well, they don't differ very much. Uh, in 
the case here of the Tokyo data, where I looked at 366 days every single day in 2024, from January 1st through to December 31st. And the, uh, let's see, how, how does this work out? The mean sign difference is 0 0.4 degrees Celsius or 0 0.72 degrees Fahrenheit. So the hourly temperature is giving us a slightly lower value. If, if we are if we are calculating this as the daily high plus the low divided by two, we are slightly overestimating the average temperature for the day. Um, so, but, but it's not by very much. So, so for every single day, on average, we're off by less than half a degree Celsius and off by less than one degree Fahrenheit. Um, and I, I want to read a quote that I put in here for from the World Meteorological Organization that explains this in detail. Here's the quote from the World Meteorological Organization. There are many methods for calculating an average daily temperature. The best statistical approximation of an average is based on the integration of continuous observations over a period of time. The higher the frequency of observations, the more accurate the average. Practical considerations generally, generally preclude the calculation of a daily average from a large number of observations evenly distributed over a 24-hour period because many observing sites do not measure an element continuously. For comparative purposes, a standard processing methodology is desirable for all stations worldwide, with as many stations as possible. All ordinary climatological stations observe a daily maximum and minimum temperature. Hence, the recommended methodology for calculating average daily temperature is to take the mean of the daily maximum and minimum temperatures. Even though this method is not the best statistical approximation, its consistent use satisfies the comparative purpose of normals. And so this is recommended by the World Meteorological Organization in the case of calculating normal temperatures. And I put a direct link to that in a footnote. So this is the... It, in their third edition of the book Guide to Climatological Practices. So it, it's certainly a valid way to do this, is to take the, um, the minimum temperature, add, it, add to that the maximum temperature, divide by two. That, that gives a slightly higher average temperature, but practically it's the same. When I checked this for Maui, in the Hawaiian Islands, the average difference was less than 0 0.1 degrees Celsius overestimation uh, compared to the 24 hourly temperature method, and that's less than 0 0.2 degrees Fahrenheit. When I checked this for Whistler, British Columbia, it was about 0 0.3 degrees Celsius or half a degree Fahrenheit. So you get you you will tend to get a slightly higher average temperature for the day when you use the maximum and minimum temperatures added together divided by two, compared with an integrated average of 24 hourly temperatures. Pace turf for the growth potential calculations, everything you see on the Pace turf website for growth potential that's calculated using the same method that the World Meteorological Organization is recommending for consistency, which is the maximum plus minimum divided by two. However, I like to be as accurate as possible. And if you see what the World Meteorological Organization says, they say the best statistical approximation 
of an average is based on the integration of continuous observations over a period of time. The higher the frequency of observations, the more accurate the average. So if you're taking the temperature every 15 minutes through the day and taking the average of that, that would be even more accurate than the 24 hourly measurements. I think we, we need to be clear about what actual value we are reporting or what we are referring to because the average can be calculated in different ways. And I will say that my preference, my preference myself, when I have hourly temperature data, I do like to calculate it as the average of the 24 hourly measurements. But um, you get virtually the same number from the minimum plus the maximum. I never really try to go down to so much detail of getting every five minutes or every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes. Um, I, I haven't tried that. I don't see a huge amount of value in going to that level of detail, but I do find that I often have access to hourly weather data. And when I have access to hourly weather data, I find it useful to take the average that way. There's a number of interesting articles about this. So if you're interested in how average temperature is calculated, you can do a Google Scholar search for those and find more information. Um, for now, I guess the take-home message of this blog post is uh, you can calculate average temperature either way. And the daily high plus the daily low divided by two, which is a common way to get the temperatures for growing degree days or for growth potential is a perfectly suitable and accurate enough way to get the average temperature. But if you want a little bit more insight, and and I sometimes do, and you might sometimes want that little bit of additional insight also, when your grass is growing at the extreme level of heat stress or at the extreme level of cold stress, and growing, if the grass is growing in a real challenging environment, you may want to get that little bit of extra information about the accurate, a little bit more accurate value, a even better statistical approximation of what the grass is growing environment is by doing that 24 hour average. I, um, I, I'm going to change directions now and and go away from turf grass and give you my little uh, travel or food tip that I've been including in some recent episodes. In this case, it's a, a bit of drink advice. I was at the Masters last week. I was at the Masters tournament in Georgia, and I was drinking a lot of coffee as I like to do during golf tournaments. I like to drink coffee uh, all through the year, but during golf tournaments when you are not able to get so much sleep, it's nice to have some coffee in the morning, and sometimes it's nice to have coffee later in the morning and in the afternoon also. But it was also relatively warm in Augusta. You may have seen some of that on television. You may have seen the sunshine, and I was getting a bit thirsty, and I didn't want to drink hot coffee. And so I filled a paper cup with ice, because there's an ice machine near the coffee at the Augusta National, uh, where the uh, employees are at the Augusta National Golf Tournament. And I uh, filled the cup with ice, and then I filled it with hot coffee, and then that makes it, it quickly cools down and forms a very nice iced coffee. And I recommended that to a few people, and I know a few of my friends there tried that and enjoyed it. And I think if you haven't tried that, you may enjoy that as a refreshing spring, summer, autumn, even winter drink. You can have iced coffee. This is something that is a standard drink in Japan. We have iced coffee in Japan all the time. And if you make a visit to a golf course maintenance facility in Japan, it would be uh, common for you to be served a drink of iced coffee, which you will then drink as you have a meeting and perhaps before you go out onto the golf course. So that's my bit, uh, that, that's my tip for today. 
check out iced coffee if you haven't. And I, I found that the coffee that was being brewed at the Masters Tournament uh, tasted really good when it was chilled. Not every coffee, not every blend or brew of coffee will taste so good when it's chilled, but this one was superb. I enjoyed it very much. And that was a heck of a tournament too, wasn't it? All right. I hope you enjoy this insight into calculating the average daily temperature. If you haven't yet, check out the blog post where you can see those detailed charts and see how on some days you may slightly underestimate the average temperature. On some days you may slightly overestimate the average temperature, but it doesn't vary by by too much. You you generally are never going to be more than a couple degrees Fahrenheit away from what the best st statistical approximation is of the average temperature. Thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. I'll be back again soon with another bit of turfgrass information here on the ATC Double Cut. For now, I will sign off for ATC from Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm Michael Woods. Bye-bye.